Over the years, MS Teamworks has shared different perspectives on MS from patients, care partners, family members, and healthcare professionals. Guided by our mantra, I have MS, I have a team, I have a future. We are proud to share new messages of hope and inspiration with the MS community. I have MS. I'm on your team. I have a future. My name is Dr. David Brandis. I'm an MS specialist in private practice. Uh, I've been seeing multiple sclerosis patients for many years. I've done a lot of research involving MS and MS patients, including even the spinal fluid of MS patients. Um, and I've been involved in a number of years now for talking about disorders of MS that are somewhat uncommon, but really more common than we think, and also other diseases that interfere with multiple sclerosis diagnosis and treatment. And in particular, I've been talking about sleep disorders and pain disorders. Uh, which interfere with the diagnosis and treatment of MS as well as uh, just making sense of what's going on for a lot of the healthcare practitioners as well as the patients. There really are two causes of pain in patients with MS. One is MS itself, which can cause pain, and the other is having other conditions which can cause pain and often get mixed up with MS. So there's two kinds of pain we can talk about and I think it's important to cover them both. When I go to diagnose pain in MS, MS patients, I need to think about is it from MS or is it from some other condition? And it involves taking a very detailed history of what's going on with that patient. And just let me give some examples. One kind of pain that people get is spasms in the muscles, cramps in the muscles, and they can be painful. That can be caused by MS, and there are treatments for that, medicines to help reduce those spasms. Um, Sometimes uh, people have what we call neuralgia, nerve pain in MS. The nerve fibers in your spinal cord and in your brain send the wrong message up to the brain and you feel pain because the pain fibers are being stimulated by scar tissue and inflammation rather than pain in your body. So neuralgia type pain and muscle type pain are the two kinds of pain we often see in MS. But there are other conditions that can occur and can cause pain as well. And two that I talk about a lot is one condition called fibromyalgia. Fibromyalgia is diffuse body muscular aches, pains, tightness, uh, and also can cause neurological symptoms like numbness and tingling, uh, blurred vision, trouble thinking clearly. And is that MS or is that fibromyalgia? And another thing that I commonly talk about is what's called myofascial pain syndrome. And sometimes there are focal pains in a muscle, like a muscle in the neck or a muscle in the back or in the arm, but it refers pain elsewhere. So you might feel a muscle in the neck refers pain to the head or to the eye or to the ear. Some of them even refer to the teeth. And so people come in with pain in their tooth, the dentist can't find it, and it turns out to be a muscle in their scalp refers patient pain to the, um, to the tooth. So it's really kind of tricky to put all these things together. And MS patients are not protected from having these other conditions. As a matter of fact, stress can make those other symptoms worse. And guess what? People with MS have stress. One thing that I like to use as an example is uh, sometimes people understand if you have a heart attack, you might get pain in your left arm. There's nothing wrong with your left arm, but that's where you feel it. Okay, it's very true. So that's called referred pain. And what happens is the message going into your brain from the spinal cord about your heart gets mixed up with arm symptoms because they're, they're very close together in the spinal cord and the brain thinks it's in the arm. It may be in both or it may just be in one. So it's a misconception that the brain has um, and where you feel something isn't always where it's coming from. When we have patients with pain, obviously we need to diagnose what's causing it, that's number one. But then number two is what treatment are we going to provide? And that's tricky uh, because sometimes patients have more than one condition. But we start with spasms in the muscles from MS. We have muscles, we have medicines to reduce those spasms in the muscles. And uh, they're very common, they can be used and they can be very helpful. Uh, sometimes you have to take it three or four times a day to prevent the spasms. Uh, they also have a pump that can be implanted in your body, and your, under your skin, and can put that same medicine into the spinal fluid through a little tube, and it's there all day long, 24-7. Uh, that helps get away from having to take the pills, and you might have less side effects with that. So I have a lot of people who have those pumps installed for spasms of the muscle. 
For nerve pain from MS, we have a lot of other different medicines to do that with. And some of the medicines we use to treat epilepsy, some of the medicines we use for depression, help nerve pain. And so that's what we'd like to do. We'd like to avoid opioids if we can. Uh, some people need them, but we prefer not to do it long term because over the long term, it, they tend to lose effectiveness and you have to keep increasing the dose and it gets to be more and more of a problem. So we try to avoid opioids. Now the other conditions that I mentioned, like fibromyalgia and myofascial pain, fibromyalgia again often responds to epilepsy medicines, to antidepressant medicines, certain ones, and it can be very, very helpful to get people on those. In addition, we find that exercise therapy can be very helpful for those patients. And so we want to recommend exercise, and of course with MS, it may be harder to exercise because of the weakness that you have and so on, but it can help MS as well. So exercise and stretching the muscles are very important. The other one that I mentioned, the myofascial pain, where you have a focal muscle here or here or here that refers pain. Sometimes there's multiple muscles that do that, maybe in the neck, maybe in the back. And one of the things we can do is use a muscle relaxant. That may help. But the thing that I find most helpful are what we call trigger point injections. Those are trigger points. And if we inject them with Novocaine, and I use a complicated system of doing that, inject them with Novocaine, it numbs up the spasm in the muscle and the spasm in the muscle stops and the brain and the spinal cord say, oh, it doesn't hurt anymore, you can relax muscle. And it can relax for months. And I have a number of patients who have done trigger point injections on. I do them every three months and they say, you know, I hate getting those shots, but can I please have some more? They're so helpful. And so trigger point injections are not taught to a lot of healthcare providers. Some physical therapists know about this and can find a healthcare provider that does that. But physical therapists can also work on myofascial pain with what are called dry needling, put little needles into the muscle and then do stretching and strengthening exercises. So the idea is to recognize that patients may have more than one condition and if you have more than one condition, how do we treat this? And it may be complicated for some patients. So the patients need to know about this, that there are these other conditions and talk to their healthcare provider who may be saying, well, it's just your MS but wait, I heard that it may be this other condition too, in addition to my MS. When I talk to my patients who have chronic pain, uh, that can be a very important part of what they have, or it may not be very important, but it's still disturbing. So it depends on how severe it is and how much it interferes with their life as to what kind of treatments we want to undertake. Um, so depending on the pain, uh, if it's just you have it once or twice a month and it lasts for a few hours, okay, you know, take an aspirin, take, even if you have to take an opioid once or twice a month, that'll be fine, okay? Um, on the other hand, if it's constant, if it's all the time or mostly all the time, that's really important. So not only severity but frequency is important when we look at treating these conditions. And again, I have to say that making a diagnosis and maybe more than one diagnosis are important to figure out the best way to treat that. And uh, I have a number of patients who have fibromyalgia, they have myofascial pain syndrome with trigger points, they have migraine and that gets triggered, and they have MS. And it's just incredible. The good news is we have treatments for all of these. And I have a patient, uh, for example, that had um, myofascial pain syndrome and migraine. And it kept, the myofascial pain kept triggering the migraines. This is an MS patient. And she was having migraines about three to four times a week. Tried her on some medicine, it didn't help much. Put her on Botox injections, 31 injections around the scalp, and her headaches went down to about three or four times a month. And then I started treating her trigger points with injections every three months. Her headaches have now gone down to one migraine every three or four months. It's incredible. From three or four a week down to one every three or four months. Need to be a detective and figure out exactly what's going on with patients that have these conditions. I have actually a lot of success stories. One that I just gave you is one. Uh, but I have other patients uh, who were misdiagnosed by other physicians uh, and thought to have just MS or just um, fibromyalgia. Because fibromyalgia can cause numbness and tingling. Uh, and if they have migraine, sometimes they get spots in the brain on the MRI scans from migraine. And so these are complicated patients. And I've had patients who came to me with just fibromyalgia and migraine, but with a diagnosis of multiple sclerosis. And I was able to determine through all the work that I do that it's not multiple sclerosis. That made them very happy. And it turns out to be something else, which is treatable. 
And so I've had a number of patients like that. And I've had a number of patients also who were having their MS treated and the other pain problems didn't get any better. And the other doctor treating them says, well, there's nothing more I can do. This is how I treat MS. I don't treat these other things. And so it helps for patients to be aware of these, that there are people who treat these kinds of things, uh, and they need to be aware of it because oftentimes the healthcare provider isn't. The main uh, message that I like to give to people is most of my patients have multiple sclerosis. They're, I get MS patients, but MS does not prevent you from having other medical conditions. I think it's important to recognize that. And not everything you feel is due to MS, but it may be or it may not be. And the healthcare provider and the patients need to be educated about these things so they can think about other diagnoses. MS does not prevent other conditions. And if you have more than one condition, you need to recognize it and treat both of them, or all three.